Funko, one of the leading manufacturers of licensed vinyl figures, bobbleheads, and other crazy toys and collectibles, recently dove headfirst into the world of board gaming. Today, I'm going to take a look at the spectacularly weird tactical miniatures battle game, Funkoverse Strategy Game. To date, the Funkoverse line of playable characters includes a slew of DC Comics heroes and villains, Rick and Morty, Harry Potter, Jurassic Park, the Golden Girls, the Kool-Aid Man, and coming soon, Jaws and Back to the Future. You round up a motley crew of these characters, three in a full game, and jump into one of the scenes from the properties. You have the T-Rex paddock, streets of Gotham City, the Golden Girls house. Most of these sets come with a double-sided board and, of course, a couple of scenarios to play on them. For the most part, you'll be scoring points in one of three ways. Whatever the specific scenario goal is, collecting crystals lying around the board, or knocking out your opponent's characters. During a round of play, each player alternates activating their characters, and each one gets two actions, typically choosing from moving around the board, interacting with stuff on the board, challenging opponents, or using their special abilities and items. <laughs> when you challenge another character, you roll a couple of dice, and the target rolls their defense. If the attack is successful, the defender does a face plant. If you kick them when they're down, they'll be knocked out, and you'll score a point. One of the coolest things about all these characters is they have a very diverse set of abilities at their disposal. Each ability can be used as an action, and the corresponding token is placed on the cooldown track and will slide down each round until it slips back into your token pool. At the beginning of the game, you also get to select a special item for one of your characters to tote around on the board. The ones I happen to have here are the Batarang, Harley Quinn's giant mallet, a flare, night vision goggles, Dr. Grant's precious raptor talon, a cheesecake, and Sophia's purse. These items give you one more ability that your character can use. So basically, you're going to be going from round to round, running around this map, banging these creepy-eyed little goons into each other, snatching up crystals, and knocking each other down until one player has 10 points. And that player will be the winner. So I gotta start off by saying that I'm not a Funko Bop guy. I never really got into the hobby of collecting these things, never really understood it. Now my co-host Chris, he's way into it. He's got hundreds of them in his house. And it's a hobby, right? Like you get into different types of things. I just never got into this one. So when this game was announced, I wasn't excited because I wasn't a Funko Pop guy. But what got me to take a look at it was the fact that the game launched with the Golden Girls. I know that sounds weird and kind of lame, but I grew up watching Golden Girls with my grandmother and I loved it. And I thought it would be funny to play a game with the Golden Girls in it. So I had to give it a shot. And I will tell you, I am I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted at how much I love this game. And then when I saw all the other sets they come out with, with you know the Jurassic Park got me excited because I love Jeff Goldblum, I love the Raptors and the T-Rex. And then the new stuff that they're coming out with, or they've announced Jaws, which I love Jaws. And I love uh, the Back to the Future they got coming. So now I'm in. And you got to start off by thinking about this game in the right way. This game is a silly comedy tactical battles game. This isn't to be taken seriously like a Warhammer or a War Machine or any of those. This is just a simple battle board game that's silly. You have to kind of get over yourself and enjoy that concept. Because I will say that whenever I post a lot of pictures about this game, I get quite a few comments like, I'm not interested in that nonsense. And that's the way I felt too at first. But then when I sort of got over that and tried it, I realized that there's actually a good game here and it's funny. So I'm gonna do a little pro and con here on the whole thing and, and I'll start off with a pro. One of my favorite things about this game, of course, is the fact that you can mix and match all these different characters from different movies and different TV shows. I find it funny, I find it silly, and I find it fun to come up with a fun little motley crew like I mentioned in the overview. Uh, but it doesn't end there. It goes on to gameplay as well, because I think that this game is a solid tactical game. Each one of those characters has their own set of abilities, and those abilities 
are sometimes very powerful, sometimes very difficult to pull off, and comboing them with other characters is really where it's at. Finding that neat, sweet spot of different kinds of abilities that'll complement each other. Uh, an example would be the T-Rex has a charge ability, a stomp ability, where you can run through a whole bunch of people and attack them. But it's kind of hard to set that up, because you gotta run in a straight line, you gotta have enough movement to get through them all. But having uh, other characters in there that can help you set that up is part of this game. You can position other opponent characters, you can position your own characters to get it set up and then make it happen. And you feel smart when you made that happen. You feel clever that you've developed this combo that was in the game. And there is a ton of them that you can come up with in this game. That is where that the fun lies in that. And it goes even one further with all of the items in the game as well, because they give you additional abilities. Abilities. It's fun to mix and match items with characters from different movies and different TV shows, like giving the raptor Harley Quinn's mallet I find hilarious. It's like a cartoon. He's got this giant mallet he's running around with, and I love that. And then you look at the abilities and see how they complement together. Was that a good choice? Maybe next time I'll give it to the T-Rex, or maybe I'll give the mallet to Rose from the Golden Girls or something. So that's fun too, and there's more comboing that goes on there. And talking about the abilities, my biggest pro of this game is I love the cooldown track concept of the game. This is really neat because each one of the characters comes with a set of tokens that go with their characters. Their abilities are different colors, right? So you get the tokens that go with their abilities, but your crew puts them all in one pool and you use them wherever you want. So if three characters come with one red token each, all three of those red tokens could be used on one single character to activate the red ability over and over again. Then it's out and being cooled down on the cooldown track. Some characters let you manipulate your cooldown track. So it's a really neat little resource management thing going on in there too. If you don't have as many red tokens, you have to be very sparingly how you use them and use them in the right moment. So that's another way that you can build a good team so that their tokens complement one another. You can have more options with the abilities you perform in the game. Really clever little mechanism they put into this game, making it yet again a solid tactical battle game. I love it. Now, another thing I want to mention is it is a simple game, a simple in a good way. Uh, you could teach this to your kid, you could teach this to your grandma, you could play this with adult versus adult, and it's just as good. It's not a kid's game or a family game, it's an everybody game. It's just, it's just well done, it's well designed, easy to teach, quick to teach, and it doesn't overstay its welcome as well. And replayability, every single one of these boxes comes with a map that's double-sided and scenarios for it. So if you get an expansion, you just double the amount of stuff that you got, right? Uh, and then you get another expansion, you get a third one and a fourth one and a fifth one. There's a lot of content that you can get if you start a collection of this game. And collections is really what this game's about. This is a collectible game. It's fun to mix and match all these different IPs together. And this is not a new concept, of course. We got Unmatched from Restoration Games, which is a similar concept, but that's a more realistic side version and it's been around for a while because you got hero clicks and horror clicks and you can mix or match all you want you can have captain kirk and captain picard fighting against pinhead and freddy krueger if you want to that's fun and this game does it as well i enjoy it i think it's really really well done but we do have to talk about some of the cons. Uh, and one of my pros was it's simple. That's also one of my cons. Because if you're looking for one of these battle games, maybe you're looking for something a little more complex with a little more meat to it. It has some meat there, but it is still a simple game. So if you're looking for something with some more weight to it, you might want to go somewhere else, something like a Warhammer Underworlds or something. That's a meaty game. That's sort of a board game miniatures combat battle game. Uh, so I, you know, you got to think about what you really want to get out of this game. You're not going to get a giant weighty game out of this one. Uh, the rest of my uh, cons with the game are basically all aesthetics, essentially, and the components. I mean, the components are really well done. The artwork on the board's good. All of the quality of the tokens and the characters are cool. The problem is I don't think the pops style is really conducive to a battle game like this because their heads are so big that it's kind of hard to put them next to each other in spaces because their heads are bumping into each other. When you knock them down, they're taking up like two and a half spaces where people need to be standing. So it doesn't really work too well. If you buy expansions, you get all the tokens again. So eventually you're gonna have 10,000 of these tokens around and you only need like five. Uh, of course, it's kind of hard to store all of it too because these aren't little tiny miniatures, these are 
big miniatures. And you got to find a box. And they're all just piled in a box for me. And the more you get, you're going to have to figure out how to put all this stuff away. It's a lot of stuff if you collect this because everything's really big. Uh, other than that, I don't really have any more cons. It's uh, honestly, I love it. Every time someone comes over and it's just one-on-one, -on -one, I'm ready to play. Let's, let's play Funko Pop. And we get it, we throw it on the table and everybody I've played it with so far has really had a good time. Even if they weren't really all that interested ahead of time, they were like, yeah, that was good. That was fun. And the collectability is exciting. I'm way into this whole collecting thing now. I definitely want to get Jaws because Jaws is awesome how he works. He's going to be floating around out there. He's not on the board, but then he'll crash up through the floor and attack the other players. The Golden Girls house has a shark under the floor. I love that. I think it's just great. And I want to see more. I want to see an A-team. I want to see the Ghostbusters. I tell you what I really want, I want Sly Stallone to be put in this game because then I can have Sly Stallone with Sophia from the Golden Girls and I could play Stop or My Mom Will Shoot and then my gaming life will be complete. I'm really just, I'm not having a blast with this game. I really do like it. Like I said, it's a solid game and it's funny and it's fun to put together all this stuff and it's collectible too if you're into collecting Funko Pops. It might actually get you to want to collect Funko Pops. I never thought I would get to the point where I need to have all this junk Funko Pop all over the place, but I've gotten there. I like the game. I think it's good. Check it out if you're interested. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.